Welcome to Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. I'm Dr. Lottie and the host of this podcast. I'm a physician, medical intuitive, evidential psychic medium, international keynote speaker, and author of Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, which won first place in the category of spiritual leadership in August 2021 from Living Now Book Awards. This award recognizes truly world-changing books that contribute to positive global change. The inspiration for this podcast came from my own life experiences. As I have journeyed through life, it has taught me that we're part of a greater divine web of interconnectedness. I have walked the path of illness, healing, and transformation. After two near-death experiences, I became clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient, and was guided to attend medical school at the age of 54. We will be meeting with many different types of doctors, healers, as well as spiritual leaders, educators, and other inspiring souls in this podcast. It is my hope that you will gain information and create a path to healing your own life physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and bridge the gap between science and soul. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudi.com. To stay up to date on future episodes and to help us reach a larger audience, remember to subscribe, review, and share this podcast as well as subscribing to my newsletter at divinespiritualessence.com. Welcome to Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. I'm Dr. Lottie and the host of this podcast. Today, I am so excited to introduce to you Rachel Mann. Rachel Mann, PhD, is a sacred activist, social scientist, healer, and spiritual mentor. She provides an intensive one-to-one mentoring program and courses and retreats, supporting passionate individuals with a vision to integrate the wisdom gained through their own healing and spiritual study into creative service to others as a healer, therapist, spiritual teacher, writer, artist, and or social entrepreneur. Through on-demand courses and trainings, she provides businesses, NGOs, and nonprofits wishing to anchor into what the sacred values of positive inclusion, compassion, and renewed spiritual ethics. She's currently a member of the faculty of Atlantic University in the Masters of Arts program for transpersonal psychology and mindful leadership. To learn more about Rachel, please visit her website, rachelmanphd.com. So welcome, Rachel. I'm really honored to have you as a guest today. Well, thank you, Dr. Lottie. I'm so excited when you reached out to me and was, have been looking forward to our conversation. And thank you for that, that very nice uh, introduction. Yeah, yeah. You have yeah, such I'm... an interesting background. And, you know, you're teaching in the master's program. You have a Ph.D., how did you end up becoming a sacred activist and healer? Well, um, the stories are inter- interlinked. I always talk about three different streams in my life. So the first thing to make clear is that um, my, P- my, my master's and PhD, so during the Cold War, I became very interested in uh, the former Soviet Union in Russia. And so I got a BA in Russian studies, a master's in Soviet studies. And then I went on to get a PhD in Slavic languages and literatures. Um, But I've never been one to stay within, you know, what a particular box, let's say. I'm always out of the box. So uh, while getting my PhD, I, I actually majored in folklore and minored in anthropology. I basically have the equivalent of a master's degree in anthropology. So, um, so really I was raised on, uh, in the social science sciences and the humanities and interdisciplinary perspectives. 
and um, and all throughout that time of of my 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 education, I was always really quite interested in in particular in the impact of authoritarianism on individuals and communities, um, you know, under the Soviet Union, and eventually really looking at the way poets, such as the famous Russian poet Anna Akhmatova, she wrote this beautiful poem called Requiem, and uh, it was really basically a lament for her her husband and son that had been imprisoned by Stalin. So that was the early piece. So my, my academic training is in the social sciences and humanities actually. And then that was the beginning thread. So the next thread uh, that led me to doing what I'm do, doing now is that I, my mother was actually quite mentally ill. Um, it took me many years to figure that out, but she, she was, she had narcissistic personality and borderline personality disorders. So there was a lot of trauma, a lot of, you know, a lot of abuse. And in my early twenties, I decided to get into therapy uh, to deal with my mother and other issues. And that was the start of what became a lifelong interest in the field of psychology. And, and that ultimately led, and that journey to heal myself ultimately led me to discover energy healing. And so that was the second thread. The third thread is, is that I have been very spiritual since childhood. And I, um, in fact, ever since I was a child, I was very concerned about war and violence. Uh, because as I say in my writings, I consider myself a survivor of the Vietnam War because you may remember uh, that time when you would watch the evening news and they'd list the numbers of dead and wounded and things like that. And I remember asking my father, you know, like, Daddy, why are people killing each other, you know, and why can't we have peace? So, um, but anyway, my mother was a spiritual maverick and exposed me to Buddhism. Uh, when I was a young child. And uh, I also went to the Episcopal Church as a young child, but eventually my parents migrated to Unitarian Universalism. So um, finally, by the time I was in my early 30s, I decided it was time to meet a living Buddhist teacher since I called myself a Buddhist. And um, through an energy healer I had gone to, she was the one that introduced me to energy healing she was the student of a Cherokee teacher named called the Venerable Dahani Oahu, who lives in Vermont. And I went up to one of her retreats thinking I was going to study Tibetan Buddhism with her because she's also recognized as a teacher in the Tibetan Dream Kankagyu lineage. And it was the Cherokee practices that blew my heart open. So that set me on a journey to really more deeply understand Native American spirituality and ultimately led me to study Western shamanism. And so these, these three sort of st or four streams, really three steep streams of my life, basically all came together in a healing crisis I had in 2007. Um, and I ended up Actually, I was, I'd been living with terrible chronic pain for many years and deepening and more intractable insomnia and panic attacks. And um, it's a bit of a story I won't tell now, but uh, let's just say that one day, um, you know, I became very sick and a spirit in the form of my cat who had just died that day came and told me it was time to step up and do what I knew I am here to do, I am meant to do. And I knew that she meant that I was to be a healer and a spiritual teacher. So you can see that uh, I'm very shamanic in that, you know, 
animal allies are very important in my spiritual practice, including those who have lived in physical form, you know, and crossed over. So, <laughs> so that's all how it all came together. And then ultimately, all of my work, whether it is uh, doing energy healing work with one on one with clients or in my three month mentoring program, and in my teachings, my spiritual teachings on the peacemakers uh, path, which includes the Mesa tradition that I've studied from the indigenous peoples of Peru, um, all came together. And with this message that sacred activism for peacemaking is one of the most important things we can do, and that it includes that, that what I teach and what I do includes everything that I've learned through my research on interdisciplinary academic research on violence, trauma, healing, and peace. And that we have to do the inner work. We have to heal the wound, our own personal wounds and the wounds of our ancestors. And that I consider these unhealed wounds to be a deep source of this disease that manifests in various forms of violence and abuse. So that's how all the pieces come together. I, um, you know, I really basically feel very strongly that I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know, there's great wisdom and knowledge in native healing traditions in Buddhism, as well as in you know Western systems of thought. So I hope I answered that question. It's it's not as it's not as easy question to answer because it's kind of like I have to explain the, you know, the way these mm -hmm. three streams in my life came together. Yeah. Yeah. You you mentioned uh, the sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence. What can you describe that a little bit more? What is sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence? Sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence is a pathway for us to blend and merge conventional approaches to fostering and building peace to violence pre prevention with a soul infused engagement with the sacred. I think, you know, you love this word soul, yourself, science and soul. And in a way I'm saying a similar thing. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say conventional Western approaches, I'm talking about in politics, uh, society, religion, psychology, and medicine. And the soul infused approach engaging with the dimension of the sacred, which means that we honor every single dimension of our being, of human experience and consciousness, body, mind, emotion, soul, and spirit. And that we have to bring the sacred tools to all of our work, to self-contemplation, self-reflection, healing, energy healing, healing our wounds, um, sacred ceremony, and so on because I believe that those transformational tools are what will accelerate the healing, not only of ourselves individually, but of humanity. So in that regard, all of those things are in fact um, a form of activism, sacred activism, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then if we are stepping out to serve others with our work um, or stepping out to serve others to actually be an activist, like as we might imagine a social activist, then really in the spirit of Gandhi, who inspires me greatly, we, we have to be doing that inner work, the meditation. We have to be accessing the power of the sacred in order to ensure that our actions arise out of compassion and love and to thus be informed in our work in the outer world 
by all the spirit helpers, by the creation spirit, by Mother Earth. And uh, so that's why I marry sacred activism. And I have a special emphasis on peacemaking and ending violence, because this is particularly where I am most passionate. Mm -hmm. So healing, what does healing have to do with the peacemaking and ending violence? Right. So, you know, it is my observation after working with over 2000 clients over the past uh, 14 years as a shamanic energy healer, that whenever somebody comes with an imbalance within them in their life in some way, and of course, I have a lot of clients who come with a lot of trauma or trauma history, that when I'm doing that deeper work, journeying to their deep psyche, and in the kind of shamanic energy healing work I do, we actually journey into what's called the lower world, into the chamber of wounds, where we actually are extracting the wound itself, the root of the wound, the untransmuted, unhealed wound. And that more often than not, and this was true in my own personal discovery as I was healing from PTSD using energy medicine, going to energy healers, is that more often than not, when we get down into that layer, that dimension of the psyche, as Carl Jung said, we also tap into ancestral unhealed wounds, as well as collective wounds. So when I look at the, the appearance in our world today of, you know, this deep shadow of um, authoritarianism, the, the will to authoritarianism, the deep shadow of st that stoking the fires of hatred based upon people's race or culture or country of origin or, or um, gender identity and so on. What I see is this deep fear and also this deep separation, what I call separation mind, where we have become separated from our greater consciousness that knows we are one living in unity. And so healing to me is like almost really central to my my view of sacred activism for peacemaking, because if we are going to, and the Dalai Lama has said this, many spiritual leaders say this, that if we are going to end violence on the planet, we have to heal the violence that we carry within ourselves. And uh, shamanically, that also means that we're reaching back in time to the ancestors as well. So, did I answer that question enough? Am I yes. talking to No, much? absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, the whole ancestral component is very important in order yes. to heal because you know, now, we, now we even can see the traumas passed down on the DNA. So it is something yes. I think that's really um, uh, being integrated more now into our different modalities of healing. And it's yes. and what shamans have known for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, not all shamanic shamans around the world were aware of this. I mean, different shamanic traditions have different areas of specialization, but certainly, yes, I mean, many indigenous uh, cultures were definitely aware of the need to work with the ancestors and to be in a sacred relationship with them mm -hmm. so that their so not only could can 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 they benefit from the wisdom and knowledge those ancestors have gained through living a life, but also so that they aren't haunted by whatever was left unfinished by previous generations. And a recognition that 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 healing, that relationship with the ancestors continues beyond physical death. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, mm -hmm. uh, earlier well, you mentioned um, the sacred peacemakers Mesa. What what is that? 
Yes. So, um, so let me just talk a little bit about um, my training uh, spiritually. Um, I mentioned earlier that, you know, my, my ancestral roots are in Christianity. Um, and uh, my mother exposed me to Buddhism and that I decided I was a Buddhist because I, I, um, I knew I had lived other lives as a child. And that was really important to me. So Buddhism was the only religion that I knew of that acknowledged reincarnation. So, so ultimately, as I mentioned earlier, I met my first Native American teacher when I was about 33 years old. And surprisingly, because I'm a, a Euro white woman um, of Christian ancestry, I'm the classic wasp, you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Um, and I was very surprised that the Native American path called to me so powerfully. Um, and it was it, in some ways very confusing for me because I, um, I, I'd been doing a lot of my, my, um, the area of activism that I've always been involved with, um, is in anti-racism program development, teaching and training. And so I was very sensitive to the genocide of Native Americans and the ongoing discrimination against them, um, you know, on this continent. So I ended up engaging in a very deep study, um, not of the history and the culture of Native Americans, of the European invasion, its effects on the Native cultures. And, you know, so during what really amounted to about 10 years of research, I also began to read the new shamanic literature, which by writers, well-known shaman, shaman types like Alberto Viodo and, and uh, Bradford Keeney. And I began to have a deeper understanding of this, 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 what really is like uh, what I consider to be a new, an emerging spiritual and healing movement in the West, which is which is called in the Western world shamanism. So I, um, yeah. So the Mesa. Okay. So I'm leading into the Mesa. So, yeah. When I left my tenured career at the University of Virginia, I went to study with Alberto Viodo in the Four Winds Society Healing the Light Body School. And um, in the Cherokee teachings from Dahani Oahu, um, they do have a healing uh, practices, but I actually ended up sort of going more off on my own. Um, I did not uh, go into the healing practices uh, in her lineage, but I went to study with Alberto in order to learn the shamanic energy medicine from him. And his, his lineages reach into Central and South America. And in particular, the Caro people of the Andes, and they and other uh, indigenous uh, nations have this very deep tradition in the Mesa, which is really basically a sacred bundle filled with stones and crystals that are energized through prayer initiation uh, to hold the the dynamic and powerful transformational supportive energies of the sacred mountains, the Apus, the animal allies, um, the, the Neustras, which are the, uh, the, the great spirits, goddesses of the waters, and so on. So the Mesa to me and the cosmovision of the, of the Caro and the other, other native nations of the Andes is one that is very rooted and grounded in peacemaking and in generosity, in sacred reciprocity. So for me, my, my initiation into the Mesa tradition is what ultimately healed me and led me into a place of great peace within myself out of all the turmoil and trauma. So I teach 
a Peacemakers Mesa tradition that merges all these different wisdom lineages, knowledge streams. Um, and as I say, all of these lineages, they're the, the footsteps of the ancestors walk in my Mesa. And so through the Mesa tradition and through working with the Mesa and all these powerful beings of light, you raise through prayer, energy medicine, sacred song, uh, sacred sound, sacred dance and ceremony, you raise your vibrational frequency. And then everything that you do, so even if I am using my Mesa in a healing session, always and ever it is dedicated to the good of all people, that all that powerful healing will come to all people, that that peace, that light will come to all. So I call it the Peacemakers Mesa, and I am deeply grateful to all of my teachers from the Andes for this great, powerful, um, way that they have gifted me and thousands upon thousands of others on the planet today. Wow. And this class, can you, um, do you teach that online? Can people just sign up to take this class or how does that yes. work? Yes. So due to COVID, I, um, I, uh, well, it's almost as if I felt COVID coming because in about 2018 to 2019, I, I began to taper off, um, teaching for a while. I took a sabbatical, you might say. And um, so, yes, now I offer all the, the peacemakers um, path with the Mesa tradition in online courses. I'm actually going uh, to be offering the introductory program starting in January called the Peacemakers Path. And it is a course that will be live on Zoom where I will teach them all the foundational practices, prayers, and they will initiate their own Mesa and be led into their own engagement with all these great beings of light, powers and helpers with Pachamama, Mother Earth, Creator Spirit, and all the, the above beings. So yes, so that's something that people can certainly look me up with. I also will be teaching um, a very, uh, a very, uh, a much deeper course than that one. If for people who want to go very deep and intensively into this practice, so that I will be launching in the spring. And um, they can just go to your website to find these classes, or yes, go to uh, rachelmanphd.com and go to programs, and you'll find the links. Yes. And if people want to get introduced to me and to the, um, you know, to the uh, Peacemakers Path and the Peacemakers Mesa, I, I do offer once a month a free two-hour gathering um, called Heal Your Beautiful Life, Heal Our Beautiful World. And you can go once again to programs under rachelmanphd.com and you can see what the dates for those meetings are for the rest of the year into January. All right. That sounds wonderful. And, and we'll make sure to mention this um, at the end of the podcast as well. Yes. But yes. I have another question for you. Okay. So where do you think our world is going right now in these times of chaos and change? Mm -hmm. These times are very, very difficult. Um, I mean, we have, you know, war is all over the world. Genocide is still ongoing against some people. I mean, the litany, climate change, the weather has become more drastic, more dramatic. The earth is shaking and quaking. And uh, more and more people are being, are political refugees, economic refugees um, from their own home nations. And uh, yeah, it is a very, and as I said, you know, the will to authoritarianism is looming. So I want to be very, very clear that this kind of uh, 
chaos in the United States, all this violence, you know, racism, systemic racism has been alive and well in the United States, despite many um, advances and gains, thanks to the civil rights movement and Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and so really why I feel it is so critical. I mean, there are other people who are doing the work of uh, teaching about sacred activism and why I feel that really speaking directly to sacred activism for peacemaking and ending violence is so important is that I feel that we are at a critical choice point. So I talk a lot in my teachings about destiny lines and destiny lines are essentially these, these great beams of light or pathways of light that shoot out whenever a person is born. And there are many multiple possible futures or probable futures. And there are, there, within an individual life, there are going to be individual choice points that are going to determine the direction we go. So firstly, I wanna say is that there have been many prophecies among Native Americans that we are in a great age of transition from an age of separation from an age in which there has been an incredible amount of violence into a, an emerging world of peace. But we human beings have a choice because when we incarnate in a human body, we have free will. And so it is so important right now that more and more people step up to do all that I have already talked about, included in sacred activism, to to really raise their own vibrational frequency, to heal their families, to heal their communities, so that we can then really magnetize more and more a destiny line towards this future of peace. And I firmly believe that this future of peace will come. And studies have shown that it only takes 3.5% of a population um, enacting nonviolent resistance to create change. And I believe that that's true on an energetic level as well. So even as we may take actions as healers and ministers, socially and spiritually aware entrepreneurs, as we do our own inner work to heal our wounds, the wounds of our ancestors, we are in fact contributing also to making that critical tipping point. We're, we're, we're energizing it so it will definitely happen. It will become probable. It will no longer be just possible. Does that answer your question, I hope? Yes. Um, I love it. It's, I, I believe that myself, you have to, um, each individual, e each individual has to heal their own trauma, their own ancestral yes. issues. And it's the only way that we can really move forward because we, it all begins with ourselves and then we yeah. are all connected. So we're connected to everybody else on earth. We're connected back with our ancestors and it's yeah. just this large, enormous, giant spider web of interconnectedness of everything that is. And yeah. it's absolutely true. And each person has to step up and, um, and raise that vibration and, and create the healing that the world so desperately need right now. So you talk about, you say that your work is trauma informed. What does that mean? And how is that related to the spiritual? Yeah, so of course, you know, I've been talking a lot about, you know, um, um, healing the wounds, our personal wounds and the wounds of our ancestors, and in so doing, contributing to the healing of our communities, our nations and the world. Um, my, although my PhD is not in psychology, I, I actually had a, a very deep interest in trauma, in part because of my own healing journey. And, um, and, uh, Obviously, you know, I had a deep understanding, even as a child, that war hurt people and that uh, that hurt could be lasting through time. So I 
I did a huge amount of uh, research and connecting with people in an emerging academic field called trauma studies, which was emerging in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I ended up also receiving uh, training uh, in trauma, trauma and more interventions. Um, and so although I'm not a psychologist and don't want to portray myself as one, I mean, I'm not a licensed clinical, profession, clinical professional, um, trauma has always been really at the heart of my work, addressing trauma. Because to me, and, and what trauma-informed means is that I understand very personally from my own healing journey, as well as from working with thousands of clients and from my training in uh, trauma, you know, intervention in, in, uh, uh, in trauma, that, that there are natural pathways of transformation that heal trauma. And on a soul level, my understanding is, is that our soul chooses our particular experiences. So I myself was born in this, you know, in this family with this very troubled, difficult mother. I experienced trauma and really it was an initiation towards my spiritual awakening and on the path to enlightenment. And so trauma informed basically means that in all of my work, I am always very aware of how, you know, how people will join spiritual communities, right? And they think they're going to go there and it's going to be all peace and love and light. And then all of a sudden all their shadow comes up and all their stuff and they're in conflict with one another. Right. And that's because we have to have an understanding of the nature of how wounding works and, and then how to address it in, in proactive ways through all the different tools that I've already discussed. So that's what I mean by trauma-informed. And how is that related to the spiritual? Oh you, oh, you asked me that. Yeah. Well, in a way, I hinted at it because, you know, on a soul level, on a spiritual level, Really, the truth is, is that these hurts and wounds and traumas are not who we really are, right? They're, although, of course, very naturally, that when we are traumatically injured in whatever way, right, um, certainly our ego consciousness, our identity can get very constellated around that, that trauma, that story of trauma. And that is just, you know, that is just the nature of living in a human body, that part of our job is to, to begin to tap into our expanded consciousness, our crystalline rainbow nature, and that as we begin to unwind and transmute the hurts and harms in our lives, the stories of our woundings, we begin to, they are really actually a gateway or a portal to touch into our original nature and our original instructions as souls in human bodies. And in so doing, we become more and more liberated and free to ultimately come into oneness and union um, within ourselves, with the spirit within, through, and around all that is, while at the same time, we can still balance the experience of living in a human body where we are also um, with our unique personalities and our ways of being. And that to me is the, the core journey of every human being. And I'm going to ask you one more question before we uh, wrap up, and that is, how would you define the sacred and the spiritual? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. So the spiritual is the, the way that's the way I would define spiritual. Spiritual is the way, it is the path, right? The sacred is the 
the perennial unbroken dimension of our higher selves and our spirit. The sacred is also the, the, the dimensions of, you know, the multi-dimensions. So, and then when we say we're going to take a sacred action, what we are actually saying is that we are tapping into that experience of unity and oneness and diversity. Spirituality, the spiritual is in a way the way, it is the mindset, it is the pathway, right? It is the knowingness of our connection. I don't know, did I do a very good job differentiating I, those two? Yeah, no, I, I love that. that, that's a great description. And um, before we wrap up, I want you again to uh, tell all the listeners how they can find you. What is the name of your website? Is it Rachel? Okay, so people, yeah, people can find me. It's very easy. Rachel Mann, PhD. So that's R I C H E L M A N N, PhD.com. And uh, there, there are links to email me. You can also email me at Rachel Mann, PhD at gmail.com. And um, Certainly, I would love to connect with anyone who wants uh, an individual shamanic healing session. Or if you want, you can work more deeply and in a focused way with me in, a, in my three-month mentoring program. And if you are an organization, a business, a university, then I also offer consulting programs, trainings, and retreats to bring your organization upshift your vibration and and help you address any conflict within and magnetize any new vision you have for service to others yeah i love it so uh the website again is rachelmanphd.com and that will also be in the podcast notes so you can just go to the podcast notes and click on the link and it will take you right to her website so again, I want to thank you, Rachel, for being a guest today and sharing all your wisdom with the listeners. Well, thank you, Dr. Lobby. Your work is great, too. Um, I haven't read your book yet, but I really look forward to doing so. And um, yeah, let's keep up the good work together. And as I say, let's go. There's no time to lose. I love it. Thank, thank you so you. much for being a guest today. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Dr. Lottie Science with Soul. To stay up to date on future episodes and to help us reach a larger audience, remember to subscribe, review, and share this podcast, as well as subscribing to my newsletter at divinespiritualessence.com. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudie.com. My book, Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, an inspirational story about transformation, healing, and spirituality, which won first place in the category of spiritual leadership in August 2021 from Living Now Book Awards, is available online at Amazon, as well as other online platforms worldwide. If you are a person who understands the interconnectedness of mind, body, and soul, and would like to take one of my courses or work with me, to create a path of healing your own life, please visit divinespiritualessence.com or drlaudie.com.